I'm very you know, grateful to present my talks here at University of Waterloo. Okay, um, for uh, this afternoon, uh, I'll be mainly talks about how we design one-dimensional nanostructure materials, how we manipulate this one-dimensional nanostructure material for the application of lithium-ion batteries. So mainly, uh, I will be uh, presenting three parts. One first part is silicon, and the second part is silicon germanium, and the third part is uh, uh, titanium. So as you know that early <coughs> 1990s, uh, we used uh, some small that uh, uh, laptop computers and the small the video camera cameras, and those days, uh, uh, people doesn't require much of the 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 battery which has a much higher the energy density. But now uh, we moved to the, the mobile device. Now we, we are using the mobile device as a, just laptop computers and the, the cameras. So many functions, multifunctional are built in that uh, uh, mobile devices. So much more <coughs> that the uh, energy the source requires. So we need the battery with the much higher energy density and the higher power on the longer lifetime, even some application will require the device, the battery has to be some flexibilities. So for the, um, the anode materials, the, the battery we are currently using is a graphite uh, basis electrode material. So graphite, the energy, uh, that the capacity is around uh, like a 380 to 400 degrees, 400. Milliamperes. Now uh, the silicon has been well known. I mean, is very exhausting material, which has uh, the capacity around uh, 4,200. But the problem associated with uh, using this silicon material is uh, uh, it has a much larger volume expansion, so it fails. So uh, the problem uh, over the, this silicon electrode material is. Uh, the cycle performs after many cycles because of uh, uh, the silicon uh, react with the lithium and it uh, forms a lithium uh, that alloy. Then it expands the volume around 400 percent. So uh, uh, during the lithiation, delithiation, so you uh, the this uh, pulverization problem is the main cause of uh, the uh, the lifetime of the silicon anode material. And then the second one is that the silicon is a, a much poor rate comparability due to the low uh, electrical conductivity and the lithium diffusivity. So many researchers have tried to overcome this uh, problem. So first, and then they use the very small nanoparticles material, and uh, the Ichi at the Stanford University he used the silicon nanowires, and. Uh, Another of uh, the groups, uh, they use the, the film types uh, um, that uh, silicon materials to accommodate this uh, large volume expansion of the silicons. And uh, uh, the last three and some other people make uh, some porous uh, material to accommodate, accommodate the, this silicon uh, volume expansions. So uh, we have thought about how we can uh, Still, like uh, each after several studies, uh, still after 50 cycles, uh, only the 60 percent of uh, that retention can be maintained. So, uh, we uh, thought about how we can improve these uh, uh, retentions. So, first, uh, we thought about uh, uh, using this one-dimensional nanomaterial, and then by uh, uh, introducing that uh, some free uh, free space making that uh, uh, silicon nanotube material, then it can accommodate the volume expansion. So it can uh, have some space to expand it for the silicon material. So uh, we designed uh, this uh, concept. And uh, so how we can synthesize this uh, silicon nanotube is uh, on the top of uh, uh, current collector, we use a stainless steel foil as a current collectors. And on the top of this uh, stainless steel, we synthesize the uh, zinc oxide nano rod as a template material. 
after we synthesize the zinc oxide on top of a stainless steel foil, and we coat the silicon, and then uh, we etched out the zinc oxide, and then it leaves uh, silicon nanomaterial, silicon nanotubular material. So you can see here, we can synthesize uh, uh, the silicon nanotubular material, which has uh, the outer layer of uh, 60 nanome uh, nanometers of layers and 80 nanometers and 110 nanometers. And also, this, this picture shows uh, uh, the TM, the image of a bundle of a silicon nanotube, which has uh, the outer ra radius of about the 60 nanometers. And uh, also, higher uh, the TM, magnification of TM image shows uh, the diameters, the outer diameter around the 60 nanometers of uh, uh, silicon nanotubulars. Also, EDX shows us only the silicon without any oxygen presence. So uh, TM picture also shows the silicon nanotube, and the inside of the silicon nanotube, uh, it doesn't show any, only the silicon, but the out layers, as the silicon uh, interact with the oxygen, so it forms a, a very uh, thin uh, silicon dioxide layers here. So XRD, Raman spectra shows uh, uh, crystalline silicon. And uh, you can see here with uh, uh, this silicon, it can uh, have uh, around, the, for the first column efficiency at the rate of 0.05C, which can have around 87%. And uh, up to the 50 cycles, uh, uh, it can maintain the capacity around 82%, which is uh, much, much higher than other uh, researchers, the, the reporters. So we uh, studied uh, what is the main mechanism associated with uh, this uh, much improved uh, the retention. So uh, we, uh, we observed the morphological change of the silicon nanotube after uh, one cycle. So you can see here, we started from the um, 60, uh, the diameter is about 160 nanometer, so which uh, the thickness of the outer layer of uh, this silicon nanotube is about uh, 30 nanometers, and the, the length height is uh, uh, 3.7 micrometers. A as we uh, litiated this silicon material, you can see here is only the radial expansions, but the, not the uh, actual uh, uh, direct, uh, ex uh, expansion to the uh, actual directions. After the resetions, you, you can see that it can uh, come back to the original shape. So it shows a very super reversible morphological changes. TM picture also shows uh, without, uh, for the, from the pristine and the it deteated, you can see still uh, small spaces. Uh, so, uh, we assume that uh, this volume expansion goes uh, inside and out layer, so it can uh, relax the volume expansions. Also, after delication, it can come back to the original that uh, shape, so it shows very super reversible morphological changes. So, after second cycles, um, second cycles from uh, Princeton, and then now that the uh, silicon material. Uh, with the formation of uh, the uh, lithium um, with the, the silicon, then it forms the uh, silicon uh, lithium alloy. And then after we uh, come back to the, uh, for the first cycles, it remains as uh, now amorphous state. So from the amorphous state, now as we uh, retiated uh, this uh, silicon material, as it reacted with the lithium, it expand it to the actual directions and the radial direction, both directions. And then after uh, the second cycle, you can see still it can come back to the original shapes. So uh, you can see here uh, for the uh, many uh, three different types of uh, thickness of uh, silicon material, 60 nanometers shows the, the highest uh, retention around 82%. and. Uh, the capacity uh, is around, uh, it, it maintains around, uh, around uh, what, uh, 2300 uh, milliampere per grams. 
So we uh, studied other that, uh, uh, different diameters of uh, silicon nanotubes for the 80 nanometers, 100 nanometers, and, uh, but uh, the 60 nanometers shows the optimal conditions. So we uh, calculate how that the volume uh, expansions. Uh, so for the radial directions, actual expansions, uh, so we uh, come up with that uh, uh, radial expansion is much uh, higher than uh, actual expansions. So this theoretical modeling of the mechanism shows that uh, comparing that uh, uh, silicon nanowire, nanotube experience much lower normalized stress. So uh, it can withstand, withstand that volume expansions of silicons. So, and then after we completed these studies and then we thought about how we, uh, uh, we know that the uh, silicon nanotube shows a very good uh, cycle retention, but uh, the poor rate of compatibilities because the silicon has a much lower uh, ion, ion, lithium ion diffusivity and uh, conductivities. So or we, uh, how we improve this rate of compatibilities, uh, two ways. Uh, we can just uh, simply open the, this uh, tube so that which can inter interact with the more electrolyte solutions. And then also the second thing is uh, to uh, increase uh, the electron conductivity. So we can simply dope. So uh, doping the silicon and tube can increase the, the electron conductivity so that we can expect some uh, increase improvement in rate of compatibility. So the first thing is we are just uh, uh, we opened from the silicon nanotube. We first uh, when we synthesize, synthesize this silicon material, this is a very concealed material, and then uh, we simply just uh, opened. Uh, then we can uh, have um, the theoretical area, area ratio increase to the 1.75 percent. Th then we can uh, you can sh you can see here. Uh, by opening that cap, uh, we can slightly increase the rate of compatibility, but then, then not, not much. And then also the dopings, uh, the, we dope the boron and the uh, phosphorus. And as we dope the, uh, the boron and the phosphor, we, you can see that the um, electron conductivity increase. But uh, uh, with the dopings, uh, uh, we could not achieve much improvement of rate comparability, even if we increase the, the electron conductivities. So uh, we thought uh, just by simply just opening the, uh, that uh, cap and uh, also the doping does not really increase the rate of comparability. And then we thought about uh, how we can increase this uh, uh, silicon, uh, the rate of comparability of the silicon material. So, we uh, decide to introduce uh, germaniums. So germanium has a much higher the capacity, also the, uh, but it has some poor cycle retention due to the also, this also has some huge volume expansion, but uh, good rate of compatibility due to the germanium has a much higher that electron conductivity and the lithium diffusivity compared to the silicon. So uh, electron conductivity is about uh, 10, 10 to the two times higher than the silicon, and the dip diffusion is about 10 times higher than the, uh, the silicon material. So we uh, decide to make uh, the same that uh, uh, strat uh, strategy. Again, the, on the type of uh, stainless steel as, as current collectors, uh, we uh, synthesize the zinc oxide material, and then we coated the silicon, and then we, uh, after coating the silicon, and uh, we uh, coat the germanium on the top of uh, the silicon. But uh, first, uh, when we just uh, simply coat uh, uh, silicon on top of zinc oxide, then um, there is uh, some cloggings between these two, uh, uh, between these two tubular material. So we had to tap on the top of this silicon, uh, zinc oxide, so that uh, silicon can penetrate all the way down to the bottoms. So SGM picture shows uh, very well-grown uh, synthesized silicon germanium and uh, 
tubular material, the length around 5 micrometers, and the, the diameter near the tip is 120 nanometers. So TM picture shows uh, uh, silicon inner layers around 15 nanometers, and the outer layer is 15 nanometers. And uh, also, the EDX shows uh, silicon and the germanium outer layers. You see here the, the TM, the uh, silicon has a crystalline that the face, germanium has an amorphous uh, face. So uh, after we uh, cycled uh, this silicon germanium, um, silicon germanium that the uh, nanotubes, uh, silicon nanotube, you can see uh, here so as we, we, we have achieved much improved rate comparability of uh, silicon uh, germanium nanotube compared to, compared to the silicon material. At the uh, 3C, you can see 33% uh, retention, and the silicon germanium is about 60%. But the amazing thing we have uh, observed is uh, by simply making silicon germanium multi-layer nanotubular material, we could improve the capacity retention around 92.7% uh, compared to the silicon itself, 84.8%. Uh, 80, so we thought, what is the main mechanism? Be uh, that is, uh, we are uh, studied. First, uh, that we are, uh, again, uh, the, we theoretically analyzed th that uh, mechanism associated with uh, this uh, uh, multi-layered tubular materials. So, we uh, did some mechanical simulations obtained from the Northwestern University group. So they simply making silicon, germanium, and then uh, silicon and germanium. And then they calculate the, the volume expansion with the uh, silicon itself it is around 1.58%. And the silicon germanium nanotube is 1.57. So which is uh, uh, convert to the stra uh, strain 2% much lower than uh, silicon nanotube. So we, uh, with the designing uh, silicon German, germanium out layers, so germanium expand much, a little bit less than uh, silicon, which can accommodate the silicon's uh, uh, volume expansions. So here, again, we, uh, we observe the volume change during the cycles. And 35 uh, litiation, uh, you can see the uh, germanium interact with the uh, 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 germanium interact with the lithium, and then fully litiation and the silicon between uh, both uh, germanium and the silicon interact with the lithium, and the, after one cycle, it come back to the original uh, uh, silicon germanium nanotubular uh, array, and which shows very super reversible morphological changes. So uh, theoretical that silicon germanium also uh, there has to be some uh, optimal condition between 40 percent, 50 percent volume uh, volume fraction in silicon germanium multi-layer nanotube. Also, we have uh, calculated the theoretical analysis for the kinetics how that lithium uh, interact with the uh, uh, silicon between silicon germanium, which. Uh, uh, the germanium has much lower absorption uh, that energy, so uh, germanium has a much higher uh, ion diffusivities. Also, uh, as a lithium uh, goes into the saddle point and then it goes to the uh, interstitial site, uh, every that uh, the reactions germanium has a much lower that uh, energy to interact with the lithium. So, uh, so uh, we could have, a uh, we have developed a very well uh, silicon germanium uh, heterogeneous nanotubular material for the much improved rate comparability. And the, the last, the third one is uh, the TiO2 studies I will be showing you. So uh, many people have uh, tried to use the titanium as anode material because it has much uh, good stabilities. But uh, the weak point of uh, titanium is uh, because uh, it has a much larger band gap, so it is a very low electron conductivity. So how we can improve this electron conductivity is uh, we use the uh, 
two strat, uh, strategies, two tactics to overcome this uh, low electron conductivity. First one is uh, we simply make a nano size material. So nano size it has, can be improved much uh, faster uh, electron, uh, much shorter electron path and much shorter than lithium diffusivities. Also, uh, by introducing one dimensional nanostructure, we, which can electron can go much faster, uh, faster to the one uh, dimensional uh, geometries. And then last one is we uh, making some uh, surface modifications such as a silicon uh, titanium nitride. Titanium nitride is a well known material for the much higher electron conductivity compared to the silicon uh, titanium. So uh, we are. Uh, uh, we synthesize the uh, titanium uh, nanotubular material by uh, simple the spinning electro spinning method. So we uh, first uh, make we first synthesize the just simple titanium nanofibers, and then we all, we made uh, the tubular types. So by comparison uh, between these two materials, uh, here's. Uh, the 50 nanometer of uh, titanium nanofibers has uh, about 25 uh, nan uh, the diffusion length. And then as uh, by making the hollow types nanofibers, uh, which can, uh, the diffusion length can be decreased to the 10 nanometers. So about 60% decrease uh, diffusion length. And also we uh, calculate uh, how much that the uh, flux increase at the interface. So, Titanium na hollow nanofiber is about 25 increase in terms of uh, flux increases. So we uh, first uh, com compare three, uh, these three materials. First, uh, titanium, just uh, hollow uh, fibers, uh, just fibers. And the second one is uh, uh, hollow uh, nanofiber fibers with uh, the thickness about uh, 20 nanometers. And then after we uh, synthesize the titanium, the hollow nanofibers, we nitridate the uh, TiO2 on the TiO2 with the nitrogen to increase the uh, electron conductivities. So uh, you see here, uh, this is nanofibers. Uh, uh, the diameter is about 50 nanometers. And uh, uh, hollow nanofibers, our layer, our layer of uh, the thickness is about 20 nanometers, and uh, um, nitrated one. So we have uh, carried out uh, many uh, experimental conditions to uh, optimize uh, uh, the uh, silicon, uh, the titanium nitrate thickness. So around uh, holding time around 30 minutes at the uh, 600 degrees shows the best uh, uh, the thickness of titanium nitride, uh, which yields the best rate compatibilities. So uh, each uh, that uh, uh, X, uh, XRD and uh, XPS shows uh, the as uh, we increase the the temp at the time of uh, the nitridations, uh, you can see nitrogen peak uh, increase. So XRD also shows uh, uh, the this titanium nanofibers, uh, titanium hollow nanofibers, and the F, and this uh, the blue uh, that pic shows uh, titanium with the uh, nitridations. So the battery performance shows uh, titanium with the uh, um, the nano uh, nitridation hollow fiber shows uh, the highest uh, uh, retention and the uh, rate comparability. You can see here around the. Uh, tens, uh, compared to the, uh, around the 5C, that the uh, nitridation shows uh, the best uh, rate comparabilities of uh, uh, titanium materials. Uh, the last one, uh, this is a more, some ex extended uh, studies of uh, titanium. So we have studied what is dominant factor governing rate comparability of uh, titanium. And uh, so uh, simply uh, on the top of a stainless uh, steel, just uh, uh, we grow the uh, titanium uh, nanowires and titanium with the, the nanotubular structure and then just the randomly oriented uh, nanotubulars. So compare these three together. So 
The SCM picture shows a very well-ordered uh, titanium nano wires, and uh, this is nanotubular, and this is uh, uh, randomly oriented nanotube structures. TM picture shows out diameter is 100, the wall thickness is around 20 nanometers. So uh, the battery performance shows around uh, um, that uh, direct growth of uh, nanotube and direct growth nanotube unsealed. Unsealed one shows uh, the uh, capacity, uh, one, 193 uh, capacity retention, and uh, uh, titanium direct growth is 191, and uh, some randomly oriented is 160. So uh, we can conclude that uh, not only just uh, making this uh, hollow, uh, some, uh, uh, the surface area for, of the titanium uh, intact with the electrolyte, but uh, the orientation also important factors. So for the rate compatibility, again, here's uh, by making that titanium open and the direct growth on the uh, current collector shows the highest rate compatibility. Also, uh, uh, by studying that uh, um, the resistance of uh, titania shows uh, uh, this uh, direct growth, the titania uh, tubular structure shows the lowest uh, that resistivity of materials. Uh, this pic also showed the band gaps of uh, theoreticals of uh, uh, 001 and 100 uh, uh, plan of uh, titania interacted with uh, uh, lithiums. So uh, this is uh, for the future study. What we're going to do is uh, uh, what is uh, then uh, uh, the length of the titania of, uh, effect on the rate compatibility of uh, this anode mature, titanium anode mature. Also, by making uh, simply titanium with uh, some branched uh, the, that's carbon nanofibers, which can uh, give us some uh, electron paths between this uh, titanium mature, how that uh, uh, this uh, uh, attached branch types of uh, uh, carbon nanofibers will affect on the rate compatibility of the titanium material. So this is about my uh, presentation. And I have been talking about how we designed nano materials, uh, especially silicon nanotube in this case, how uh, we uh, uh, manipulate the orientation of uh, these nano materials, how that affect on the uh, lithium ion barrier's performance. Thanks for the, your attention. We don't, I don't think we can find those uh, information in the literature. So yeah, you're right. And uh, this, uh, as a lithium interact with the uh, silicon, it forms a lithium, what, point four silicon, and then, then that yeah, lithium diffusion is still keep changing. So yes, you're right. But there are all these uh, two phase regimes, uh, unless at that temperature. Mm -hmm. um, uh, otherwise, I can't imagine that even at that temperature. So I just wondering how valid those numbers are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. But uh, just based on this, that, this, uh, this uh, temperature, we assume that uh, germanium has much higher lithium diffusivities than uh, silicon. But uh, yes, you're right. Uh, we, has, we should have done it in the room temperature at the two regimes there. Or I think it might be interesting to, of course, the question is, I mean, the fusion coefficients are always difficult. but. It'd be equally, and if not more interesting, to look at the amorphous materials. Mm -hmm. So when you deposit the germanium, you say that that is amorphous mm -hmm. because the silicon is crystal. Mm -hmm. Yes. And why is that? Because the silicon, to in order to etch out zinc oxide, the, the to etch out zinc oxide, the temperature has to go around the 900 degrees C. Mm -hmm. That's why the the silicon forms the crystalline. We could. We wanted to have uh, amorphous phases, but uh, we have to uh, etch out the zinc oxide material. So that's how we got the crystalline the phase for the silicon. But after the coat the uh, germanium, then germanium, uh, nothing we have to etch out. So germanium, we just coated uh, at the temperature around the 600, so it forms uh, just amorphous. Yeah.
So what I thought about uh, for, from this study is <coughs> the diffusivity affects uh, the rate comparability much higher than the, just the electron conductivity is over much higher. That's what I thought. Yeah. Because as we doped the very heavily doped the silicon material by boron or, or phosphorus, and then also the electron conductivity, we see it much improved. The electron, but it doesn't. That the rate of comparability does not really improve much. That's why I'm sort of fussing about that diffusion coefficient because of that, that importance. Yeah, we could. Uh, I, I wish we could have a much more accurate value, but very hard to get it. Did you try this in your nanotubes <coughs> where you have the layers, the, the actual um, two different layers, and just heat them up in order to create an alloy of silicon and germanium? Silicon and germanium? Yeah, you can, you, can, you can make an alloy of silicon and germanium just by heating them up. That's we. In other words, you would, you would defate, you would demix them, whatever the term is. We did it, uh, just not that, uh, not that uh, types of uh, just uh, melt together, but uh, we did uh, just uh, heterogeneously grown silicon germanium composite types. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had that uh, uh, result, but it doesn't show much improved uh, uh, the rate of comparability. So we just omit, we, st we decide not to study further. Mm -hmm. I think it was for the silicon nanotubes, mm -hmm. and there was iron impurities or iron phase Because uh, stainless steel. Oh, okay, okay. So, so we grows that uh, silicon on the top of stainless steel, so the XRD that shows the ions. Okay, okay. okay. Yes, we did that, but uh, that's a very good question, yeah. For the film types, uh, the, as uh, the lit uh, lithium interact with the silicon, then it expand, it expand to the the radial and the actual direction, both directions, but the, usually the nanowire types of uh, uh, one-dimensional nanostructure, it has a full cell that strain relaxation direction. So it rather to expand to the radial direction than uh, actual direction. That's why it uh, maintains. But still, uh, you're right, uh, so many other things uh, we have to consider whether that uh, just the volume expansions of that uh, silicon, but uh, the, uh, the interface between the silicon and the, the collectors, yeah. that, that positions uh, we, want to, we, want, we wish to observe, but uh, uh, after many cycles, it's very hard to observe the, the cracks uh, down there. So. Actually, okay, the, for the first questions, uh, yes. <coughs> uh, zinc oxide we use as a template. So template, it's a sacrifice. So this is nothing to do with the catalyst to the, uh, the further that the, uh, the synthesis of the silicon. And the second one is uh, mm, the stainless steel because you know for the uh, these types of silicon that the CBD method, the temperature goes around 900 degrees C. So uh, stainless steel is only uh, one of the, the best material used as the current collector, which can uh, stand against uh, like a 900 degrees. Okay. And the so second question is so what? Uh -huh. Yes, as current collectors. So did, uh, any other Any other what? Uh, ah, any other current collector? We hadn't done it because just that is enough work to force. Uh, yeah, I have a, a second question. Okay. Again, the same, the, the same method. After we, we grow that uh, zinc, uh, zinc oxide on the top of uh, stainless steel, and then we uh, uh, synthesize the silicon. But uh, before we uh, synthesize silicon, and then we tap the, some titanium, uh, I, I mean zinc oxide at the uh, top, so that uh, we can gr uh, grow the silicon all the way down to the, uh, the bottom of the, uh, the zinc oxide, and then we etch it out. The after we etched out and then we caught uh, germanium. But uh, uh, 
compared to the, that uh, silicon studies, uh, uh, silicon germanium has much uh, highly dense, uh, very well uh, packed, uh, high density uh, that nanotubular material uh, synthesize. So we should have uh, some interface between this nanotubular tube uh, material. So we we should have uh, we we should uh, uh, etched out the top of uh, some titania on the top. Otherwise, the germanium could not uh, penetrate all the way down to the the, the bottoms. Argon etching. Argon just etching. Okay. 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 Uh, iron etching. Ar argon. Argon etching. Argon etching. I just arrived here. I mean, yesterday I, I still have gel lag, so <laughs> my my brain is not working <laughs> properly. Sorry about and my English. Yeah. Okay. Then the, the second question is: uh, So I, I assume the applications for these uh, for these thin films are actually uh, to make the micro. Uh, that's, this is very fundamental studies. Uh, we try to show how we design this uh, nanomaterial, silicon material, for the application of uh, uh, lithium ion battery to increase that the actually the energy density of uh, lithium ion battery. So uh, we just show them uh, some basic principle associated with the silicon material. Now the industry, what the industry they do uh, from these studies, they want to have, they cannot use this kind of nanowire because it's too expensive. So uh, they either just making just one dimensional nanowire and put with the, mixed with the uh, graphite the anode, and then they could uh, have, uh, the graphite, uh, the capacity is around 380 milliampere. The silicon nanowire is about 4,200. So mixing together the small addition of silicon nanowire that they could have uh, the electrode anode material which can achieve to the around 800 uh, milliampere per gram e easily. So, and then the second one is uh, some S SIOX uh, studies uh, they're doing. Also some retinol you know, types of uh, the alloy, then they put the silicon in there. So uh, silicon, titanium, nickel composite, those things. Uh, now in the industry, they try to uh, adapt. Now because I was thinking like your work on these heterogeneous nanotubes is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you compare in the end like gravimetric mm -hmm. capacities and mm -hmm. it would look just so much better if you compare the volumetric capacity because germanium, like the density is higher. So in mm -hmm. the end, I think you end up with the same. Yeah, that's same a good, very good question. I so, think you're you just like, I don't know, not putting enough emphasis on the, like, the impact. Of yeah, depends on the, how you calculate the, the yeah, that's a very good you know, point out, yeah. And we talked about, but still, you know, uh, we, uh, this, you know, just by simply increase, by simply using this silicon, because it has a much higher the capacity, but still it has some room to expand. Mm -hmm. then. The, when we consider this kind of the battery, we consider the volume, the energy density is very. So it, when it comes to the volume, that the energy density, maybe it, it trade off some. So which can go a little bit, uh, not you know, like uh, 10 times higher than that. But uh, for, for the, based on the calculation, based on the volume, that energy density, it is about how much is it? About, well, it goes the, uh, way down to the, like uh, two times or three times. Mm -hmm. I think we just mm -hmm. But the silicon germanium things, uh, uh, this, uh, again, this is very fundamental studies. Uh, uh, by designing the out layer material of uh, uh, that uh, out layer, which can uh, shrink, uh, expand a little bit less than the silicon inside. So it can have uh, some, uh, what, uh, it can act as uh, some. Uh, uh, withstanding that material. So by designing that, you can see much improved that, uh, the retentions. So uh, you, you, you can see many other people also did something. Uh, the silicon material and the 
by developing some silicon dioxide out layer. Silicon dioxide does not uh, expand. So the silicon just, they just confine this uh, silicon that expansions inside of that uh, silicon dioxide mature. So, so those kind of uh, thing is very fundamental studies here. So it's very weird, you know, as you, you point out, uh, it should increase much better than this one. But uh, maybe it is something to do with electrolyte could not penetrate on the inside of a silicon nanotube, maybe. I am, um, you know, that the very small, the diameter, the diameter the, here is about 60 nanometers. So that capillary, that channel, that maybe the electrolyte, it cannot be, that's. Uh, it, How long are the tubes again? You said 3.7 it's, it's a, it's a five micron. Five micron. That's, uh, yeah. So we, yeah. yeah. You're right, yeah. So you think it's just a one-dimensional transport down that tube that's mm -hmm. the problem? Yes. I mean, if you have a fairly high concentration of, of salt in your electrolyte, in principle, it wouldn't be, as long as the electrolyte can wet, mm -hmm. it, it should be much better. Yes. But we hadn't, we hadn't carried out, uh, we did not carry out those kind of experiments. Because when you first, uh, uh, we are not actually in a battery expert, you know, person. I'm, I'm doing like so, uh, the one dimensional nanostructures, synthesis, and the design, those kind of things. And then uh, the test came to me, and then why don't we apply this in you know, a material for the battery? So that's how we started getting into this battery field. And then we haven't have much idea about those you know, electrolyte and uh, those things at that time. 